Aloha, aloha. We are here. Welcome to Aloha Friday. As always, I'm your host, Shane Austin. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Austin. And this is Aloha Friday, where greatness is made casual. So grab a Mai Tai. Dave's Mai Tai is a little different today. Relax and enjoy the show with us today. Tell us, what are you drinking today, Dave? (laughs) Ah, emergency, emergency, you know? (laughs) That's my Mai Tai today. That's helping me stay, you know, healthy and strong. Um, In my gratitude, I'll explain more on that. All right, well, I'm glad I'm here, baby. All right, so I'm grateful. I've been down all week. I mean, it's been a tough one. I normally don't get sick. But um, I'm just grateful that I'm actually able to put on a law shirt and get up and be here. I'm inspired. I, I thought about it when I was going, man, can I make it to the show? Can I make it to the show? When you, when we were, when you were, I think, eighth grade, uh, your Pop Warner team, we, were, we made it into the playoffs, and we were one of the front runners. And you came down with a 102-degree temperature. You're sicker than ever. And we're like, oh, no. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because, you know, in, in, in uh, playoffs, you lose one game, you're gone, you know. So here's this amazing season that we're all going to go down maybe because, you know, you're our quarterback. and We need our quarterback. And uh, I don't know if this is bad parenting or good parenting, <laughs> but I kind of, you know, did everything I could to get you as well as you could. But I don't think you would have been able to. I could have held you down anyway. So I'm going to say it wasn't me. It wasn't bad parenting. <laughs> but you went out there with 102 degree uh, temperature, hadn't been able to even get out of bed, I don't think, for a couple of days and freaking had the game of your life. And we went on and then even went all the way to the Super Bowl that year. So, you know, the show goes on even when uh, you get a little knocked down. So I'm grateful. I'm here and I'm drinking my Mai Tai of emergency. <laughs> well, I'm grateful for health, <laughs> for being healthy. Um, nothing, no, I haven't caught any bug. Um, and, and I know everybody, I feel like, is catching the, the flu bug lately. So um, it's easy to be grateful for your health when you're sick because you're like, that's all you can think of. But I, I got to say, it's it's actually, you got to identify it when you are healthy. And I am so grateful for being healthy. And uh and I got to say, you know, one thing, the way I got through those games, like you were saying, when I was under the weather is you reminded me or you would tell me, hey, Austin's when we're sick or when things are <laughs> tough, you come stronger. You actually play better. And and maybe you were just uh, at that time blowing smoke up my uh, but I believed it. And that was the thing is if you believe it, man, that's powerful. And I believed it. And I was stronger even when I was not feeling as strong, which was pretty cool. So uh I see, I see some people are coming in. Some regulars, Maddie Moss. What's going on, man? Aloha, uh, hey, Maddie. Jackie. Woo. Dream big. Thank you, Shane, Dave, and Doctor Gruber. Gruder. All right, Sorry. Jackie coming on Edmonton. Yes. And the, okay. the show must go on. The show is going to go on. So, what you know, for those of you who are coming in right now and, and joining us, what you guys are going to learn today is going to be uh, really cool stuff. We had. Dr. Gruder on our show for a very short cameo when we were live at CEO Space, kind of an interactive workshop in Florida. And uh, he came on and dropped some bombs for us. And that was pretty cool. So we're going to dive a little deeper into that today. And I remember what he said is you live your life at the level of your wounds, not your wishes. And you'll see the title talk about releasing the baggage. So today you're going to learn how to first identify the baggage, whatever that is in your life, whatever blocks you have, and then how to release it. So that way you can go and, you know, unleash your dreams as the title says. So that's a little, little preview. And, and again, reminder, stick to the end. That's when we give away the, the quick, the quote of the week. The tip of the day, Coach Dave's tip of the day, uh, some books and podcasts that I'm, I'm currently listening to. I love audiobooks. I love learning. Um, and then, you know, just some final thoughts as we head off into the weekend. Today, in honor of the Olympics going on right now, I want to try something new. So get ready to answer some trivia questions, a couple, just uh, based on the Winter Olympics right here. And Dave does not know what questions I'm going to ask. So I'm going to ask you as well to no, see don't if you put me on the spot. No. Oh, I'm putting you on the spot. Let's see what you got here. Okay, so the first one, true or false? Hey, it's 50-50 chance here. The oldest man to receive a Winter Olympics medal was over 80 years old. True or false? Wow. 
That Think would make it so bizarre. bizarre. Comment, <laughs> comment your answers below so we can see who, who's uh, who's right. You got 50-50 chance here. It's so or easy false. to say no, no it's, not it's not true, true but it's such a bizarre, bizarre question, question that I got to guess it. Someone kind of did. did. Come on. Okay, so you're guessing true. All right, yeah. I want to see what some of the other people are saying. Uh, as I'm waiting, we got a false from Chase. Uh, as I'm waiting, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the second question, and I'll come back to the answer on this. Okay, now this one: Who is the most decorated American Winter Olympian? Think of uh, you know, think Michael Phelps of Winter Olympics. Okay, maybe not as big as Michael Phelps because he's the most decorated Olympian of all time in the world, but at least in America. Who's got the most medals? The Winter Jensen, Olympic. the the, huh? the uh, speed skater, was Who? it Jensen? The, the Jensen? speed skater. Okay, That's so Dave, Dave's guesses are, <laughs> I mean, true, true, and Jensen, right? Yeah. Okay. So All I could right. be really out of left field. Some answers that are false. All right, so going back to the true or false, the oldest man to receive a Winter Olympics medal was over eighty years old. The answer is true. He was oh 83 years old. Uh, the Norwegian American received ski jump bronze medal 50 years after he competed in 1924. There was a scoring error that was oh, discovered God. in 1974. So they sent him out his bronze medal <laughs> when he was 83. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, now, who was the most decorated American winter Olympian? I haven't seen anybody come with the answer yet. Um, and, and Dave, again, guessed Jensen. I want to see if there's any. I'll give it a little bit more time, but I'm going to give it right now. I'll give you a hint. He's in commercials. Every Winter Olympics, he's coming out in commercials. You'll see him out there. Um, he's got eight medals. Oh, two, Apollo. Two are gold, two are silver, four are bronze. What was the answer? Apollo. Apollo Ono, you got it. He oh, is wow. our, our most decorated American Winter Olympian. Never realized All righty. That. So that was uh, – so I don't know if anybody got any of those right. Uh, <laughs> you did get Apollo, though. I'll give you that. And you got True. That's actually pretty much yeah, – Well, not that – yeah. Oh, we had a Sean White guess. That was that was pretty close. I would I would guess that, too, because of the dominance he's had. Uh, I'm sure he's on his way. Uh, I think Apollo Ono oh just has more competitions. That's probably why he has that uh, opportunity. So, all right. Let's talk about our guest of the day, Dr. David Gruder. I'm so excited to bring him on again. He dropped some knowledge for us um, that one little brief time, and I just had to bring him back on the show so we could get to know him and dive deeper into that. But um, just a little background is he's an 11 award winning multidisciplinary psychologist, and he likes to refer to himself as a recovering psychologist, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's beyond that now, but he's he's done keynotes on three different continents, eight different countries. Uh, I mean, he's been doing this for forty plus years uh, on you know number of topics, hundreds of topics. So we're just fortunate enough to be able to talk about you know a very important topic today. So um, without further ado, let's let's bring him into the conversation. Dr. David Gruder, welcome to the cast. How are you doing today? I am happy and grateful and delighted to be with the two of you, Shane and Dave. I, I love awesome. it. You know, I think this is our first time we've had two Daves, so it could get could a little power, confusing. maybe. I just I'll, can't I'll, even I'll, imagine the power is going to come flying through with two Daves. That's I'll, right. I'll refer to uh, uh, Dave <laughs> over here, my um, Dave Austin. I'll, I'll just refer to him as Big Wave today. I'll, I'll actually give you the title of Big Wave. I usually call him Small Mush Dave because he doesn't really ride the big waves anymore. But I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> I'll let you feel. You know, like you got big waves today. <laughs> I, I did. I rode big waves at sunset. I'll own it. I did it, and yeah. uh, you can't take that away from me. Even if I can't do it now, I did it one time fifty some years ago or so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll, so, I'll get a medal for it when I'm 84. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll get a right, way to bring it back. Uh, so, Dr. Gruder, what are you grateful for today? We always like to ask our guests what they're grateful for. Oh, uh, you know, the, the list is so long. Uh, I Truly, I'm grateful for my wife, Lori. I'm grateful truly at this point in my life. I'm grateful every day I wake up. <laughs> and... Uh, and most of all, I'm I'm truly grateful for the spiritual support that I always feel 
in dealing with what I deal with in my work around the cultural uh, cultural upheavals that we're going through and the support that I feel that helps me stay centered and loving in the face of such corruption and tyranny and polarization in our culture today. Mm. Jeez, that's a powerful, deep gratitude. I love it. I love it. And I know uh, you were saying you're a little under the uh, weather today as well. Are you feeling a little better now? Well, I'm feeling better than I did a couple of days ago. That was uh, I started catching some kind of bug. And fortunately, my wife, Lori, who's an acupuncturist, uh, gave me some Chinese herbs, uh, a formulation that uh, that helps to knock out these kinds of things. And as a result, it really hasn't caught on and gathered momentum. Uh, so I've been feeling better over the past couple of days rather than increasingly worse. Uh, so I'm really grateful about that, too. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Where, where was your wife when I needed her? <laughs> <laughs> A phone call away, Dave. <laughs> uh, I'll mark that down, that I'm on my memory bank now. <laughs> well, we got we got two Davids here today. We got two bugs going around. But and it's a great reminder to all of us, whether you're you know, if you're feeling sick or if you're feeling great, be grateful for your health at all times. You never know, you know. It's, it's such a powerful thing to be grateful for the little things, the things that we take for granted. We don't take it for granted when we're feeling lousy because then we're like, oh, I just wish I had something. But we definitely need to appreciate it each and every day. And, and I love that you brought that to us. So I want to hear, because I don't even know this story, but just to start off, I know we got a good topic that we're going to dive into today, but I just got to know. Your parents sent you to Woodstock, and I, want, I know that there's a story behind that. Can you just dive into that story of when your parents sent you to Woodstock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's a good one, Shane. Uh, yeah, it's true. I was expected to become a professional musician when I was growing up, and my parents were very supportive of that, and they scraped together money to, in the summertime, to supplement what I did during the school year, they sent me off to a camp for the performing arts in the Berkshires of Massachusetts. And the spring of 1969, the camp director sends a note home to the parents saying, for the first time in the camp's history, we're going to have an optional field trip this summer to a music and arts festival in upstate New York. Would you like to send your kid? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, nobody knew what the Woodstock Festival was going to be before it happened. Up until 1969, Woodstock, the Mu Woodstock Music and Arts Fair just outside of Woodstock, New York, was a, you know, a humble little music and arts festival. And so my parents just naively looked at me and said, well, what do you think? I'm internally i'm leaping up and down thinking to myself yes 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 but i'm trying to play it cool on the outside so you know i'm 15 years old and i'm saying well yeah sure okay why not <laughs> but let me tell you when woodstock was going on and my parents were watching the news coverage uh, from the the news feeds uh, that were being fed to the networks by the helicopters that were cir were circling overhead uh, above the Woodstock uh, festival site if my par if my father could have helicoptered in to pluck me out of there he would have he was having a cow and if my mother could have helicoptered in she would have joined me cuz they were very different people <laughs> <laughs> but i'll i'll tell you something very uh dismaying uh perhaps to some uh, and remarkable to others, which is that I arrived at Woodstock a drug-free virgin, and I left Woodstock a drug-free virgin. <laughs> ah, congratulations. All right, so I got a quick question for you. Before we get into all the great stuff, and it's all good, what was your favorite act that you saw there? What Ooh. stands out for you? Oh, dear Lord. Wow. I had a few, but I, I have to say that the most ecstatic act of all was on the second day, the, there were technical problems and that resulted in us, uh, in the schedule starting a lot later than they had planned to start. And that resulted in bands playing literally all night long. So at 5 a.m. in the pitch dark, Gracie Slick and the Jefferson Airplane come on stage and they play us and sing us to the sunrise. And I wow. got to tell you, being 
experiencing the sunrise to the music of Jefferson Airplane and the voice of Gracie Slick. I I, I don't know how to put that one into wow. words. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm so glad I asked that. That's so cool. I'm starting to see some even more similarities besides you guys' names, besides you're under the weather. Dave had a career, music background. He toured with, you know, Hall & Oates and some people like this. So I'm starting to see a lot of similarities here. This is pretty cool. So we'll see. We'll see if we find more similarities as we go. Um, but how about we just get into the, the nitty gritty of the, the topic at hand? And, uh, you know, you see the title there. You know, a lot of people... We got dreams. We got wishes. We want to achieve something that we maybe we haven't achieved before. We want to become a different person. And now we're researching different mindsets, uh, practices and tools and stuff like this tools that we provide. And, um, you know, we, we have these positivity. We have affirmations, all of these things. And, and yet sometimes we just still aren't getting any results. We feel stuck. What do you, what do you think that goes into that? Why aren't, you know, some of these mindset tools and, and positivity working for some people? Mm. It's, it's a great question that you're raising Shane, because over the years I've, uh, I've assisted so many people, including leaders and other business people uh, around this very question, because they're all about results and uh, and positive thinking and and things like affirmations and all of that and it's and th those things are incredibly useful, except when they're not. And when they're not, <laughs> it's because there's baggage, there's stuff that we're carrying that's getting in the way of our living, our ability to live our highest intentions. And that's what led to my soundbite from that uh, that little clip that we did at uh, at CEO Space, where I said, we live our lives at the level of our wounds, not our wishes. Our baggage vetoes our highest intentions. And uh, and so here's the thing that's really important. I My mindset is geared toward positivity. So I'm going to be using all of the positive peak performance kinds of skills and tools that I've got and peak mindset kinds of tools that I have on my tool belt. And when I notice that there's something in the way of my utilizing those wonderful skills, that's the moment that I look inside and I ask myself, what is getting activated in me that's unfinished business, that's un undermining or sabotaging my ability to effectively use those skills and embody my intentions? Hmm. Jeez, that's, yeah, that's yeah. And, it, and it makes perfect sense. You, you look like you're going to say something there. Well, I'm just going to say in so many of the athletes that – I've worked with, you know, we get on the positive, we do the affirmations, we do the game ready. Most of the time, I mean, it's, you know, we've got great results, but you're so right. Something, you know, for some, you know, it's just, it's like a poor me, not poor me, but like, why did this always happen to me? See, it's, you know, and they don't take that time to go and to just stop and figure out there's something going in here that they need to remove. I have to tell you, it's been more in my recent years of work that I've recognized it more to help those. I've even, with some of the athletes, I've helped them discover them, but I also send them out too to say, hey, there's something deeper here that's keeping you from the greatness that you have within you. Yes. So I get exactly what you're saying. And the thing that, that breaks my heart is people who are really devoted to those that kind of positive mindset when they – encounter something that's interfering with their ability to embody that or their ability to uh, to really step into the peak performance they know they're capable of. They so often go into shame thinking that there's something wrong with them that they can't use those tools effectively. And that so misses the forest for the trees. There's nothing wrong with them that they can't use those tools. It's that in those specific situations, they're using the wrong tool for the need. They're using positive thinking when it, for temporarily what they need to be do is some, doing is some baggage clean out. So let's let's go to the, the simplest of, you know, I, I love this this topic. I love that we're, you know, we're diving deep, but at a simple level, just for the, the average viewer that's watching with us, and they're like, what what is a, a block or what is baggage at its simplest form? 
Is it, you know, is it a physical thing? Is it something uh, that's emotional, spiritual? Is it mental? I, I know that's kind of a, a vague direction, but what I guess is, you know, a block within us. Absolutely. Really important to get clear about. What I refer to in terms of these blocks is what I call undigested life experiences. Mm. In other words, we've had experiences in our lives that we, uh, and there are uh, specific situations that were outside the box life experiences, unexpected ones, um, or undesired ones or seemingly negative ones that we didn't know at the time we experienced those uh, those events and dealt with those individuals that were part of those events. We did not know how to utilize those life experiences. So they sculpted us toward love. And instead, we ended up with a life experience or a set of life experiences that are the equivalent psychologically and spiritually of a bad meal that's sitting in our stomach and it's making us nauseous and we, we can't digest it. Mm. And are we, you know, are, are most people aware of these things? Are they kind of, is it just something like, like we talked about, we we're, we're trying so hard. It's like, okay, I want to get to here. I want to get to B I'm here at a, but I just can't get over that hump. What is it? You know, is it is it easy to identify, you think, or is it is it, um, you know, a lot more depth, I guess, to some of these blocks? Oftentimes, it's not as hard to identify as as one might think. Sometimes there has to be some detective work done, some spelunking, if you will, uh, going into the cave and uh, and seeing what's there. But more often than not, it's it's really not that terribly hidden. Uh, the, so let me let me answer your question in two ways. First of all, how do we recognize when there's an undigested life experience that's interfering with our functioning, our effectiveness today? Uh, the the simplest situation, the simplest way to recognize that, in addition to when we're not living in alignment with our intentions, is if we notice that we are emotionally triggered, we're carrying an emotional charge about a situation or a person where we don't like what's going on, we don't like what they're doing, and the story we're telling ourselves is that there's something wrong with me, not so, or there's something wrong with them, and if only they would change, I would be okay. <laughs> that kind of projection that kind of of uh, of looking outside of us for an outer fix to an inner problem is a losing game that can't ever work but when that, when we are vigilant and we notice that that's the mindset we've temporarily fallen into that's the canary in our internal coal mine that's the thing that tells us oh yes there's something needing further digestion in me and then the way to find out what is uh, what is that undigested or incompletely digested life experience that's holding me back, the simplest way to uh, find that under most circumstances is to simply ask ask ourselves, when is the first time that I started to feel the way I'm feeling right now, or I started to have the kinds of negative judgments that I'm having right now, where I've started to feel uh, put upon or attacked or, uh, or just in the, in the soup of this, of the theme in this situation, when did that first emerge? And that's the quickest way to get to what the undigested or incompletely digested life experience was. So, so now once you found it, I, and I just want to get your reflection on this. I have found that most people try to stuff it, right? They avoid right. it rather than bring And would you say that when you bring it to the surface, it softens the pain of it, that you actually can face it instead of hiding from it, running from it, bring it to the surface so it's seen? It's like, you know, darkness can't be dark if you put a light on it. Exactly. What would you say about that? Yeah, I agree with you completely. There's an old saying, feelings are never buried dead, they're always buried alive. Mm. 
Same thing with life experiences. Undigested life experiences are never buried dead. They're always buried alive. And so the paradox of healing is bringing that baggage, that incompleteness out from the shadow, from what's from behind us where we can't see us, but it's pushing us around, around to the front where we can look at square in the face and start by saying the equivalent of, oh, you're here. I'm not crazy that you're here and you're here right now. So you're what's in front of me and I'm going to deal with you now. Excellent. Excellent answer. I love it. And for anybody just tuning in now, whether it's live or you're watching the replay, I mean, we're diving deep into identifying blocks or baggage here with Dr. David Gruder. And and this is some really powerful stuff. And I want to know if this is, you know, this is making an impact. This is this message is resonating with you. Comment in the chats. I mean, Gruder's dropping bombs right now. So type bombs if you feel like he's dropping bombs. Um, again, even if this is a replay, type bombs. <laughs> now, now, I love it. So now we, we've been able to identify, you know, maybe, maybe we know how to identify them or now we identify at least that we have blocks. We don't know exactly what they are uh, yet. Um, you know, and then Big Wave over here talks about bringing them to the surface. I want, um, you know, just for our viewers, if there's any really actionable steps on how we can best release these, are there any, you know, certain questions that you have to ask yourself to be able to dig deep? Are there any like kind of, you know, you said maybe it is a little simpler than some people uh, may make it out to be. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be as complicated. Do you have any specific ways that you help release the baggage and release those blocks? Yeah, there are a couple of ways that I that I have that are very usable by people that, that don't uh, that don't necessarily require professional assistance or midwifing or catalyst uh, in order to happen effectively. Uh, the first of those is to uh, is to look at that undigested life experience once we've identified what that is and to ask ourselves the question what did that earlier version of me need what did what did that earlier version of me need to hear need to be how did they need how did he or she need to be responded to in order to turn that life experience into one that opened my heart further rather than shut it down further that opened my expanded my my worldview uh and my view of myself in ways that were nurturing rather than causing me to shut down and start hiding parts of myself what did i need to hear what kind of nurturance did i need to get how did i need to get challenged back then that didn't happen for me and then when when we have the answer to that question to then imagine that that earlier self, that earlier version of us is the the symbolic equivalent of sitting in our lap or sitting beside us or sitting across from us and us going back to retrieve that younger self and to offer that younger self what that younger self didn't hear, didn't get back then. So that's one way of doing it. Gosh, I love it. I mean, it, it's it really boils down to, and correct me if I'm wrong, is asking the right questions. Because uh, you know, yes. I think if we're if we're hitting blocks and we're hitting, we're trying everything we can, we're running our wheels and and spinning, and it feels like we're going nowhere. Maybe we're not asking the right questions, and we need to go back. Okay, what what is it that's causing this? What what do I need to do to to basically change this? And when you reframe your questions, ask more clear and better questions, like you're saying, you start to get better answers. So exactly. And so there, the, this distinction, Shane, is really important. It's the distinction between asking the question, "What's causing this?" which is the, a good starting place. Mm-hmm but only as the starting place to get us to the question that's really where the rubber meets the road, which is what's needed in order to resolve this. What did that earlier me need that he didn't get back then, that she didn't get back then, that 
I, as the adult me, can now offer that younger me. Mm. This is, this is, I hope people are taking notes. I mean, more bombs <laughs> getting thrown out here. <laughs> I do see some comments of bomb. We got bombs dropping left and right over Baghdad. But, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it, it comes down to, you know, the best people are able to release that and are able to move into those dreams are the people who are totally self aware. And that's a practice. That is, you know, self awareness is something that, in my opinion, it, it does take, it's a skill to be developed. And we have a thing that we call SAPA, S-A-P-A, and that stands for self-awareness, positive attitude. And when you bring those two together, you can, you know, really start to um, change things, change your outcomes. And I, you know, I grew up thinking, you know, just positive attitude. I was just like you, um, where I, I was just naturally a positive person. And I really thought, hey, if you're just positive through anything, you can get through anything with just some positivity. It uh, doesn't matter how tough it gets. But I did forget that self-awareness part for a little bit. That's like, hey, we need to understand where we're at to understand where we want to go. If we're just oblivious to that and we just try to ignore it or stuff it down and we just be positive no matter what, um, then we might be missing a key component there. But the positivity is is very powerful. That attitude you need to be able to overcome. I, I, just let me know if I'm missing the mark here. I'm just kind of getting on my pedestal here. But SAPA right there, self awareness, positive attitude. Absolutely, say, one without the other is incomplete. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, good friend of yours also. You know, which is you know, it was Roger Anthony that we you know talked about SAPA. You know, it's part of our Beast program, but it's because of Roger. And you had that experience with Roger to you know, and and I love that whole concept. You know. You positive that right. The self awareness is right there with it. That's that's a, so crucial. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is exactly what Absolutely. you talked about, David. Absolutely. And if it's all right with you, I'd like to offer our viewers a backup plan when trying to do what I just described. Doesn't uh, doesn't get the results that uh, that they want. There's a self help method that, in my opinion, in my experience, is the most most rapid, effective, durable self-help method that I've ever come across for clearing away baggage. And it is, um, it is a self-help version of energy psychology methods. So energy psychology is a family of methods, but the most well-known of those methods, those energy psychology methods, is something that a lot of people have become familiar with. It's called EFT emotional freedom technique, tapping, where we're tapping on acupressure points in our body in order to clear away the uh, the baggage inside ourselves. And one of the things that I've made available is a resource that where my voice takes people through complete self-help sequences using energy psychology tapping methods in order to clear away baggage and step into peak performance. Awesome. Well, you're going to laugh at this one. Uh, this is my method of <laughs> emptying the trash can, we call it, in sports. This is a little different, but I had to share it after hearing that. You're right mm -hmm. on the money on that. But, you know, and so I, with teams, what happens to an athlete a lot is they'll make a mistake and then they'll carry that mistake with them as they play the game. And then what happens is it's like they're carrying a trash can once they've made the mistake and then it just causes and they throw more trash in it, more trash in it. And it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. And it's really challenging now for them to perform because they're moving along with a heavy trash can. So I've done this with teams where I literally had a big trash can and I just kept throwing trash in it, throwing trash in it. And then I just take it and I throw it. I mean, you should see these teams is like and trash just goes everywhere. I said, if you don't <laughs> empty the trash, cleaning it up. <laughs> <laughs> i'm cleaning you up your trash <laughs> if you don't empty the trash can man you will carry this with you out the whole game it's so funny but that has had a huge impact on teams that i've worked with in fact since we're talking about the u.s olympic i was working with the u.s olympic team at the world cup and obviously i did my trash can talk and there was a player who was a stud this is men's uh, field hockey and we're in scotland and I saw him and his shoulders dropped. He made a mistake. And this guy would go from 6'3 stud to being like 
five eight. You know, he just crumple up and be. And I and I just you know empty the trash can. All of a sudden, the guys rose up, and he ended up scoring the winning goal against Russia. And we had never beaten Russia ever at the world level. So uh, you know, that's just a little segment of it in a confined area, right? Absolutely, Dave. And what you're describing is exactly the same phenomenon that happens, as you and I both know, with the leaders and the executives and the entrepreneurs that you and I both work with, too. Oh, amen. Absolutely. Is there a component of, uh, you know, even going with letting go of the trash can? Maybe you got some mistakes. Maybe you built up some scar tissue, and that's what's kind of holding you back. I really love the, you know, if you look at a child play a sport or something like that, you a lot of times they're fearless because they, have, they haven't built up that scar tissue. So that innocent child or that childlike innocence is really beautiful and i go back even to my own career and i and i kind of could see the scar tissue built up when i when i look back in self-awareness but would you say a key component to that is forgiveness forgiving yourself because really it's it's the scar tissues you've built up are kind of you know they're manifested you know subconsciously that we don't even know and we got to just release it with a little bit of forgiveness is that a component to it as well well, it's an interesting phenomenon, forgiveness, because forgiveness is something that I look at more as a result than as a cause. And but at the same time, it starts with an intention. Uh, the and the the form of forgiveness I think you're describing is where I'm forgiving myself for being human. I'm forgiving myself for being imperfect. I'm stopping making myself wrong or bad or damaged because I am an imperfect human being, because all of us are imperfect human beings who make mistakes. And so that's the first piece of forgiveness. I'm going to offer you and our viewers another definition of forgiveness, not instead of the delicious ones that are out there, but in addition to those others, which is demonstrating in the present that I'm no longer harmed by the unacceptable that occurred in the past. Mm. Another bomb. That. Another bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Boom, baby. Boom. Um, I one it. thing I just I just had this thought because I literally just saw this this morning and I and I kind of thought I was like, oh, this kind of has to do with what we're talking about today. Uh, but the news was on. I don't like to watch the news. One of my roommates watched the news, but I did see the uh, you know, there's this group of women wherever the broadcast was. And then this, you know, very empowered um, woman stood up and I don't even know what they were talking about, but they're like, she's like, repeat after me. Like, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am powerful. I am powerful. So, I mean, it, they were getting into kind of those affirmations and I thought I was like, yeah, you know, it's great. It's positivity. It's all that. But again, it's coming back to um, that's just one piece. I think like you're saying, you're, you're filling in the other, the piece and awareness. Yeah. That's exactly right, Shane. And, and the, the phrase I have for when we're using those delicious methods prematurely, when, when they're not landing inside us, is that all of those positive affirmations are what I call true, but not useful. Mm. Yeah. True, but not useful. And our job is to clean out whatever it is that's going on inside us that still hasn't gotten harvested that that still hasn't gotten fully digested so those true affirmations become true and useful mm. you know, that, if you, go, go ahead. i have a great uh, i have a great example but go ahead it might be the same example it might so be shane, shane was you know pr yes. you know same example the backup the backup <laughs> and we We're went through and aaron and veronica i don't know if you know aaron and veronica they're wonderful uh but they clear blocks and you know, there was like, what's, what's, you know, how are you benefiting from being a backup type thing? And they were able to clear his block on being the, the backup quarterback. And then he went on to write affirmations of, I am the MVP of the arena football league. I am. Mm -hmm. And then he realized after two weeks that he goes, Ooh, I, I am the starting quarterback. He realized because he was signed on as the backup. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. had been, well, not only did he go on to have the most amazing year and set all kinds of records in arena football. But it was exactly that. He cleared the block, and then the affirmations just kicked right in. 
And, is that and what you're going to say, Shane? Oh, yeah, that was the exact example. But a component <laughs> you're missing from that story is that, you know, I had a, a mental performance coach, my dad, growing up. So I had some amazing tools and I knew I, I was positive. I was doing everything right and I was doing everything that I could, but I still kept winding up as backup. I'm like, what is wrong? You know, it was kind of that like, why? Like, what is the message here? Like, what am I just missing something? Because I'm doing everything in my power. But again, it came down to asking better questions. And it wasn't just Aaron and Veronica there. That was a great thing. But also, um, uh, Mary Morrissey's, uh, is it her son that I, I talked to? I can't remember exactly who it was. Remember on? Anyways, he, he asked me the same, a similar question because he had to go through that same process himself but it was basically is like what is being a backup serving you and i'm like in my head i'm like it's not serving me why would it and i had to really dive into that question is like what is it providing for me what is the value and i had it dive deep dig deep and once i did i still did i i even up leveled the the mindset stuff and i added those affirmations which i hadn't been doing before but it was uncovering the block because it's like i could be doing everything right but if that thing is right here I'm not going to do it. Once it was clear, though, I mean, everything, it was a game changer. I, I haven't looked back since, and I've been the starter since. So it was That's awesome. beautiful. That's beautiful, Shane. And what you're describing so eloquently is what I call harvesting gifts from mm. undesired life experiences. Mm. Uh-oh. <laughs> do it. Wait. Bomb. <laughs> 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 let's let's drop some let's drop some bomb questions now with our with our final four this has been a i i've just really enjoyed this discussion and i hope the viewers back home are are enjoying this just as much as i have but uh dave you want to take us into the first or big wave you want to take us into the first final four question absolutely and if you fail you know it's more wounds you're gonna have to heal anyway <laughs> so <laughs> uh first question Outside of your parents, who's had a major influence on your life? Well, you know, uh, growing up, uh, lots of people over the course of my adult life, but growing up, I, uh, I really didn't have people around me that were close to me that I, that I looked up to as a kid. And so as a kid, I found inspiration from public figures in television. So as a kid, I looked up to John F. Kennedy. I looked up to Martin Luther King and I found mentorship, ironically, in the crew of the original Star Trek television series and wow. inspiration from the original Star Trek universe. Wow. wow. All right. All the Trekkies back there. And I <laughs> find David Gruder at, uh, at the next Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, love at the next Comic Con, I'm going to be presenting on everything I learned about leadership from Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Uh, I'll attend that talk. All right. Number two, if you could, what's one thing you tell your younger self? Mm. Well, one of the things that I would tell my younger self, probably the most important thing, is that I grew up being, uh, I was, I was very deeply um, and chronically bullied as a kid for quite a number of years. And I would tell that younger self that letting other kids bully you isn't noble. It's not taking a stand on behalf of nonviolence. It's self deprivation that provokes attack and it's okay to let loose. Mm. <laughs> wow. Wow. Love it. Yeah. Take some notes, everybody. All right, Dave, number three. Yeah, all right, number three. So what would you, uh -oh. you know, in our- We just lost him. <laughs> I, I'm here. Uh, I, I see him. you. Uh, we lost We lost Big Wave. Now he's turning no, into I'm Small here. Mush Dave. Where are you at, Big Am Wave? Let's see. Let me see if I can get him back here. Uh-oh. We may have, I might have to finish this up now. Yeah, he's black. I don't know. Screen is black. Do you see him? I don't. Uh, now I see him. You do uh -oh. see him. Oh, can you hear him now? Can you hear him? Yeah, I can. I can okay. hear him too. Must All be on my so end. All right, Dave, big wave. Ask your ask question and I'll just assume you asked it. <laughs> All right. So, you know, in our beast training, we always talk about winning habits, you know, to, to develop winning habits. Would you tell us maybe let's say in the last few months, some new winning habit that's really had a positive effect on you and maybe a something 
maybe a losing habit that you've released. Sure. Yeah. So the winning habit that I've been really working on amplifying is uh, is that, you know, what us we as human beings, we have two central energies, uh, the 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 not this is both for men and women. So uh, both men and women have a masculine energy in us. That's the energy of challenging and decisiveness and a feminine energy in us as both men and women. That's the energy of nurturance and collaboration. And what I have noticed is that I've always given priority to the nurturance and collaboration energy in me. And what I've been experiencing really uh, great magic with recently is amplifying my habit of challenging people more uh, and uh, and being more decisive because what I've stepped into, the winning habit, if I could name it as a soundbite, is what I've stepped into recently is devotion to comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. Mm, Jeez. I love it. That's a great, powerful answer. And I, I gotta say, I can't, see, I can't, yeah, I can't see uh, Big Wave anymore, but I can hear at least uh, Doctor Gruder here, so I can hear his answers. So if if Dave does say anything, you'll have to let me know. Cut me off. Uh, I wonder if the viewers back home can see Dave. Maybe it's just on my end, but if you can comment with a yes or a no, yes meaning I can see Dave. Um, no meaning, uh, no, I can't see him and good riddance. I don't want to see him anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Woo! So, he got, he got <laughs> so the fourth one I'll ask what lesson from your journey so far, it's not done yet. Will you always cherish? Mm, mm. Yeah. And I didn't say what my losing habit was that I was letting go of. Should I do that one. first? Absolutely. <laughs> so, the the losing habit that I've been letting go of is is my longstanding habit of using my gifts to hide my heart. Mm. And the other one that I've been letting go of is making being of service more important than making money. Mm. Wow. So I've been I've been letting go of both of those habits really actively in the recent months. And so on to that last question you were asking, what lesson from my journey so far will will I always cherish? That's mm-hmm. another one where you know, let me count the ways. I mean, good lord, the 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 um AFCOs that I've been supplied with, AFGO, I'm going to do the sanitized version for our show. Uh it's an acronym that stands for another frigging growth opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> There have been many, many, many over the course of my life, but probably the the most important impact um, to allow my life experiences to have on me is to use them to sculpt me toward ever deepening love and spiritual alignment. Mm. I love that. That's and, bad. you know, I love the, uh, another freaking grow, uh, growing opportunity. It's, it reminds me of when, um, you know, they say in sports, you know, you learn more from losses than you do from wins. And I've been on teams where it's like, okay, I've learned enough. Like, can we get some wins now, please? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> enough of the AFCOs. Come on. Let's. Okay, <laughs> I know. I'm some results here. But no, yeah. and it really did because in 2014, our, our, Gla- our Cleveland team, we were all guys that were all on losing teams and nobody wanted it. was That was the coolest thing. It's like, Everybody had written us off that, you know, we were 4-14 and 14 the year before, at least the team was, and we all came together. We weren't improving by any means because they're all just guys, you know, just scraped together from losing teams. It's like, how could that possibly – we went on to set the, you know, the best record in AFL history. We went only had one loss in the regular season, went all the way to our Arena Bowl, the Super Bowl of – uh arena football. And now I, I truly believe it was, I mean, that was the, the time when I had to ask the right questions. I had to release some blocks. That was my big breakthrough year. But uh, everybody on the team just came together that year. And that was a, a bond that I'll always cherish and I'll always remember. So uh, so we did learn from our losses, I think. <laughs> so I, I, love, I love the content. I love everything that we've discussed today. Where can people find you if they want to learn more uh, about you and just, you know, get connected with you? Sure. 
Well, uh, let me let me offer uh, two specific things. One is that my main website is drgruder.com. That's D-R-G-R-U-D as in David, E-R.com. And if you're really looking to go deep into the skills development around the things that we've been discussing today, one of my online courses can really help with that. And, and the way to get to that is drgruder.com slash power course. That's our, my course on ethical personal power effectiveness. Mm, I love that. We'll, we'll have to um, put that into the, uh, I want to say show notes, but either in the comments or even in the description, I'll put the link to that so people can click that. Um, because yeah, no, uh, this guy's a brilliant guy. If you haven't, uh, if you've been avoiding the bombs, yeah, just embrace them, <laughs> follow them, <laughs> follow the bombs. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been an amazing time. Thank you so much just for taking the time with us today. I've, I've truly enjoyed, um, getting to know you. I mean, I, I think the first time I got to meet you was at CEO space and you came in, dropped the first bomb that, that has allowed us to <laughs> receive even deeper, bigger bombs. So. Thank you for taking the time out of, you know, your schedule and joining us today. And, um, you know, and thank you for, for delivering some, some great messages to our audience and to me, myself and Dave. It's yeah, been my David. total joy. Oh, sorry, Dave. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I know I don't. He can't hear me, so I didn't want to step on him. I just had to get my thank you in also. Thank ah, you. Ah. Oh, yes, you're very welcome. It's really been my joy to spend this time with the two of you and with your viewers. And, uh, and just, just remember, uh, you know, these, these kinds of, uh, of undigested life experiences we carry, the only way they really get us in the butt is when we ignore them. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, any, any, uh, any anything you got on the horizon? Anything that you we should look forward to? I know this is kind of a this is the final five. Anything uh, coming up that you're excited about? Well, I I'm really excited about moving uh, my I I have an expanding range of online courses that I'm moving on to a new course delivery platform, and uh, I'm very excited about that. And the other thing I'm excited about is that I was asked to become the director of a Center for Integral Leadership that is being created by a graduate institute in California called the California Institute for Human Science. So I'm excited to help that operation, that, uh, that project, get off the ground. Awesome. That's, That's fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how that, that uh, takes shape. And uh, Kelly, thank you. I learned so much. Thanks, guys. Great video. Thanks for stopping by today. Um, again, Dr. David Gruder uh, dropped some amazing bombs. If you're just tuning in, definitely watch the replay. Uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> in, in all, you know, we appreciate your time. We want to give uh, David a warm aloha as we send him off. And again, stick around. We're going to give you some quotes of the week, reviews, aloha. all that stuff, uh, some tips. Um, but uh, until then, we, we appreciate you. And aloha and mahalo, Dr. David Gruder. Aloha and mahalo back. <laughs> Take care. All right. So uh, I know I can't, I can't see Dave for some reason. I can't Can hear him. So this is going to be interesting how we finish this <laughs> off. But I, I definitely want to give a quick recap um, You know, for those that are tuning in. Check out the replay, even if you watched it live. This is I'm going to go back and watch this because this was some really, really great stuff. We we talked about the blocks and the baggages that when we might be carrying around, we might not even be aware of it. We talked about you know different ways to where we can identify it, we can ask better questions, and then we talked about ways that we can release that baggage and release those blocks so that we can. Truly, if you ever feel like you're just stagnant, you're just plateauing, you're doing all the right things, but it's just not working, it's time to release those blocks, release those walls so you can move forward and into a you know more fulfilling life and really you know unleash the dreams and the wishes that you have. And then you can start applying those mindset tools and positivity and affirmations um, because they, they only work once you're able to re release those blocks. So you got to dig deep. This is an episode where we dug deep. Um, so I, I definitely enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, so as always, my quick, if you follow me on Instagram, you know, the quick is the quote of the week. And um, this week, I actually don't even know the author of it, but I've always followed it. It's been a powerful one for me is let go, 
let God. And it really, I guess a verse that would represent that would be Psalm 3, 5 through 6. Uh, again, not to get too biblical on you, but this one is something that I had to practice this week. When I, uh, some of you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, I talked about a story how I ha- had experienced sleep paralysis uh, earlier this week, Monday night. And uh, I had to truly just let go. Instead of fighting, a lot of times we just fight it, fight it, fight it. I had to just completely take a deep breath and surrender. And surrender doesn't have to be a negative thing. It doesn't have to be a loss. I just lost. It was actually a very empowering thing where I was able to just totally relax and and basically breathe because it was out of my control. And then it released that grip of that paralysis. And sometimes we feel paralyzed in fear. So I, I thought that this quote was fitting because it's something that I try to live my life by is let go, let God, especially for me, because I'm sometimes a control freak. So I got to let go of control sometimes. Um, so I want to give Coach Dave an opportunity to share the tip of the day, but I can't hear you, so I don't know when you'll end. Um, but anyways, <laughs> maybe give the tip of the day. Somebody comments when he's finished so I can go on. All right, Coach that's Dave, really, what is the tip uh, of the day? That's really funny. You talk about faith. You talk about releasing and letting go. Oh, baby, you got to really release and let go. So I'm going to use that. I changed up my tip just listening to you. Sometimes we have to control things and we fight so hard to hold on. The truth is, is just becoming aware with it, that force of that holding on might even be slowing you down from achieving that which you really want to achieve. You have to just release and let go. It's in the very breath that brings it back to you. So Shane is right now not hearing a word I'm saying. He's having to just take that breath, have faith, and then he's got to wait now. To, to have someone say, hey, he's done. I'm done. But use this as your tip of the day. Let him know that I'm done. But use this as the tip that instead of trying to fight it, relax and allow yourself to work through it on a much more calmer, stronger basis. I don't see anybody okay, saying I think I'm he, done. I think you're done because I'm, I'm trying to switch back and forth between the live stream. It's a little delayed. Uh, I'm just assuming. Can I get? I can see David Groover's just still. Can you? Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll get into the uh, just some things that I'm currently listening to. I am always a student of life, and um, maybe my recommendations, things that I'm I'm listening to, can help you. So uh, some of the the books I listen to a lot of audio books. I just finished uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Increase Your Financial IQ. Um, I wouldn't say. I would recommend it because if you've re- read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that one's you know great. Or um, Cash Flow Quadrant. Those ones I would read first if you haven't read those. Um, and then the second book, the one I just started, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Carnegie. Carnegie? Carnegie. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this one I just started, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it because it's not – you know, that necessarily influence people like, oh, get, you know, them to do, persuade them to do what I want them to do. It's really just listening to people more and really being more interested in them than you are trying to get them interested in yourself. And I don't know the quote exactly, but it's you'll you'll gain a lot more friends by being in two months being really interested in them than in two years of trying to get them interested in you. And uh, so I'm really enjoying that book so far. Uh, some podcasts I'm listening to. Uh, Tim Ferriss, he interviewed Terry Crews. Uh, it's really amazing, his story. Uh, Lewis Howes with Damon John you know, from Shark Tank. Uh, he's one of the sharks there, and he's got a new book out. So uh, he had a great interview. He, he, you know, Rise and Grind is his theme. And then last, Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast, they just interviewed uh, Adam Markell, who um, is actually going to be a guest on our show here next month. So I'm looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, and he's definitely a CEO space um, regular as well. So those are just some of the things I'm listening to. If you guys have any recommendations, anything you guys are listening to, please put in the comments. We'd love to hear. And then we'll uh, finish off with Coach Dave's review of the week. All right. So now Shane goes into that trust period again as he surrenders. So this comes from Thomas Justice, CEO of ICS Inc. It was during a a rough spell in my business that I began working with Dave as my personal mindset coach. I now believe so thoroughly in these principles. Our company just had a complete turnaround. 
So I wanted to use that as the tip because it shows that anything is possible. We can turn anything around with one, as we talked about, self-awareness and positive attitude. Now we have to see if Shane instinctively knows that I'm done with that. <laughs> I love the trust and surrender. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. <laughs> I got the sign. All right. So uh, thank you guys all for tuning in again. Um, mahalo as always. Hey, start your week strong with Dave's Facebook Live. I know he wasn't able to this week because of the, you know, being under the weather, but definitely look forward to get your game ready from him this upcoming week. And then finish your week with a Mai Tai with us here on Aloha Fridays. And uh, again, reach out, explore. You know, we got some great beast training programs um, talking about the tools. Once you're able to release those blocks and then start using these new winning habits, join our beast family where you can connect with, you know, like-minded and high achievers, game changers like yourself, like Dr. David Gruder. Um, so it, it's really an amazing family to be a part of. So with that, this is Shane and Dave Austin signing out. See you guys next week on Aloha Friday. We've got a great guest for you next week, um, a former NFL wide receiver. So it's going to be really cool. But again, Aloha Friday where greatness is made casual. Aloha. Aloha.